So GFN just got a massive update. On one side you've got install to play which is a complete game changer and on the other you've got the 5080 upgrade. More of that power boost we've came to expect. It really feels like an evolution and revolution rolled into one and yeah it's not perfect. There are some caveats but honestly this might be the best time yet to jump into GeForce now. So let's break down what install to play actually means because in paper it sounds simple but it's a huge shift for GeForce now. Up until now you were locked into whatever Nvidia added to the library. If a game wasn't supported that was it, you couldn't play it here. But now you can install games directly into the cloud just like you could on a PC at home. Boosteroid has had something similar for a while but for GFN this is massive because GFN has always been known as a tightly controlled curated service. This is the first step towards it feeling like your own gaming rig in the cloud. There is a catch though, the game still needs to be opted into GeForce Now by the developer or publisher. You can check SteamDB to see what's opted in, but it does mean the door isn't fully open and even then some opted in games don't show up. God of War is the perfect example. It was briefly available then pulled, but if you grabbed it before it disappeared it's dead in your library and you can still play it. And then there's the storage side get a set amount included but if you want more space maybe you're juggling a load of installs you'll need to pay extra it's not outrageous but it is upselling and it's worth knowing that that feature isn't completely free now here's the reality check just because a game is opted in and you can hit install doesn't mean it is going to work perfectly. Some installs just fail, some crash and others will run but with odd issues. It's not a flawless system yet. And then there's the type of games you're likely to see. A lot of what works with install to play now are the indie games, smaller AA project and those quirky experimental PC titles you only usually find by digging through Steam. Games like the Turing Test, Blossom Tales or even older titles like Turok and Knights of the Old Republic all work really well here and yes I did say Knights of the Old Republic. They're the kind of experiences that feel right at home on install to play. On the other hand you also get a bump in plenty of filler. Those two dollar flow away games that pad out Steam's catalogue but aren't really worth your time. One nice bonus is that demos count too, as long as they've been opted into GFN, that means you can install and try them before you buy the, the actual game, which is actually a smart way to test games without cluttering your storage. What you won't see much are the, the big AAA blockbusters. So if you already feel like GFN has a game problem because those titles are missing, install to play doesn't magically solve that. But flip it around and if you're into indies, retro or discovering those weird little PC games then install to play is almost perfect. Suddenly GFN has gone from a curated list of big name titles to a service where you can explore a lot more of what PC game actually is, the good and the bad. Now we've got to mention RetroArch because yes it's here. It works, it installs and you can play ROMs on it and honestly if I can figure out how to load up the ROMs on RetroArch you know it's not going to be that difficult. Now I don't think it's going to stick around forever and here's why. First, emulation always lives on that awkward grey stone, especially when ROMs are involved. Second, Nvidia has always pitched GFN as a proper created PC service and an emulator doesn't exactly fit right with that image. And third, it's one thing to allow RetroArch as software but it's a total different ball game to have it actually running on Nvidia's own hardware. Publishers are not going to be thrilled about that so yeah I'll be shocked if RetroArch lasts long term. If it lasts we will do a video on it.
but the fact it works at all is wild and it sparks a bigger question. Are we just scratching the surface of what installed play can actually do? If RetroArch can run today, what else will be possible tomorrow? Family sharing does work with install to play, but there's a quirk in how you actually see your games. If you just rely on the synced library in GFN, not everything will show up. Some games are missing from the list, but if you log directly into Steam through GFN, all your games are there, including anything from family sharing. And that's true for both install to play and the regular GFN library. So at first glance, it looks like stuff's missing, but really, it's just the way the sync system works. The important takeaway is if you've got access to a game through family sharing, you can play it. You just might need to launch through Steam or add it manually in the GFN app than rather than relying on the sync list. Now let's clear up the storage side of install to play. By default, everyone in the performance or ultimate tiers gets 100 gig of cloud storage included. That's enough for good handful of smaller games. And because most of the install to play titles aren't massive AAA games, it actually goes further than you think. The biggest ones I've seen so far are around 30 gig, so you can comfortably juggle a few at once. If you do want more storage, Nvidia does sell upgrades. 200 gig for three bucks a month, 500 gig for five, and a full terabyte for about eight. Personally, I don't think it is a big deal. Install times are quick, so swapping games in and out isn't a hassle, and if you're serious about keeping loads of games installed, the pricing is reasonable enough, so it's an easy yes. And remember, most of the really big AAA games are likely going to live in the ready-to-play section anyway, where you don't even have to touch your storage. But here's my controversial opinion. I rather prefer all games ran through installed to play. That way you can swap between them seamlessly without having to log the whole way back out from GeForce now and into ready to play. Maybe that changes down the line, but right now it feels like a split system adds an extra step that really doesn't need to be there. One area where install to play still feels a bit rough is controller support. Right now when you launch an uh, install to play game, it drops you into the standard desktop mode of Steam. That means if you're on a controller, you end up wrestling with menus or having to grab a mouse just to get things going. Honestly, it would make much more sense if install to play opened in bit Steam's big picture mode by default. That way, everything would probably be controller friendly out from the gate. The good news is GFN is slowly becoming more and more appealing to controller players. With more device supported and these kinds of features being added, you can see the direction they're heading. But right now, this part of the experience still feels more like a PC than a console. The 5080 upgrade is exactly what we've come to expect from GFN. More role performance, more features, 5K ultra wide, 360 frames at 1080p, 240 at 1440, 90 FPS in the Steam Deck, OLED, even steering wheel support. On paper, it's a huge leap. And if you've got the hardware to match it, you'll definitely feel it. But the thing is, we almost take this all for granted now. GFN has set the standard for regular upgrades that just roll into your subscription without the cost going up. Anywhere else in cloud gaming, this kind of jump would feel seismic. Here, it just feels expected, which is crazy when you stop and think about how big of an improvement it actually is. Like with the 4080, it starts with a small subset of games that really showcase the hardware. Cyberpunk, Fortnite, Apex, the usual suspects. Over time, everything will benefit, but right now, it's about those showcases. There is no doubt it is a step up, it just doesn't feel revolutionary yet. And that's where the nuance comes in. We are in an era now where dev costs are spiraling and handhelds are exploding in popularity. Full ray tracing and max 
sound graphics aren't the main battleground anymore. It is just important, maybe more important, to make sure games run smoothly on portable devices like the Steam Deck, Royal Galley or mobile phones. And that's where more people are playing. And the 5080 makes cloud gaming on those devices smoother and more stable. What I really like is how all these edge case features stack up into reasons for more people to say yes to GFN. Maybe you are an ultra wide fan, maybe you're into competitive games of V60 FPS, maybe you're a handheld player who just wants that extra smoothness, or a sim racer with a wheel. Individually, these are a bit niche, but together they all add up and suddenly more and more players have a reason to give GFN a shot. So, the 5080 is brilliant, even if we do take it for granted, even if it feels like the natural next step, it's still going to blow people away once they actually see it in action and this is the part that GFN quietly sets itself apart. We almost forget how cloud gaming looks everywhere else. Here the 5080 rolls out, install to play doubles the library, controller support improves, handhelds get better in performance and it all happens inside the same subscription. You don't suddenly get a price hike. You don't get nickel and dime with a new tier. Outside of the optional storage upgrades, it just lands in your account and works. This is how cloud gaming should be. Every new feature, every bit of extra power, every supported device is another reason to stay or another reason to finally join. And the reverse is true. Every feature you don't have is a reason to leave. What Nvidia is doing here is stacking the deck. Install to play the 5080, 90 FPS on Steam Deck, steering wheel support. They're all little nudges that add up to keep people in the ecosystem and make it more appealing for new players. That's what makes this update so interesting. It's not just the raw specs or flashy features, it's a reminder of what cloud gaming looks like when it involves naturally without holding your wallet hostage every time something new rolls out. So that's where we land. Install to play is the revolutionary bit, the 5080 is the evolutionary bit and together they make up GFN's biggest update yet. It's not perfect, some games don't work, the library still leans in the storage upsells are there and the 5080 isn't going to change the world overnight. But when you add it all up, this is the strongest GFN has ever been and honestly, even though we kind of take this for granted at this point, it is still brilliant. The kind of update that once you try it will blow you away. So I just want to say thank you for watching, like and subscribe and all that jazz and I will keep an eye on more videos which we are dropping. You're not going to be notified for them. Any questions drop them and we will try and answer them until the next time. Thank you.